No one in this congregation would say Yeshua didn't come in the flesh. That's right. Because anybody that says that Yahweh didn't come in the flesh, that same is anti-Mashiach spirit. Right. That's an anti-Mashiach spirit. Gotta go. The question is, was it your, like your flesh? Or was it like the only like a flesh that no human being ever had? That's the question. Of course he came in the flesh. The flesh, the, the question is, was his flesh like yours, or was it like no other man? That's the question. So that about Yahweh. But that, that's a good question. Rabbi, if he was not a human being, if he appeared in the flesh, in the likeness of human beings, in the form of human beings, but was not a human being, then why the genealogy? Why does Yahweh waste all that room and all that space with ge for genealogies? Now that's a heck of a question. Yeah, come on. That's a good question. Turn to yourself and say, self? self that's man. pretty good. That's pretty that's good. good. <laughs> because I'm having mercy on you today. I don't want to identify who the self is. Why all those genealogies in Matit Yahu? Why all those genealogies in the book of Luca? If he did not come as a human being, why was, why are those genealogies there? That's a, that's a, a very, very good question. Don't you wish you asked that question? <laughs> that's a good question. Amen? Well, if the word was made flesh, the word had to come in the likeness of man so that Yahweh had to prepare the body and then find a family to put it in. Yeah. Yahweh cannot come like a man in the form of a man without finding a family and a tribe with which to enter humanity. Yeah, come on. You can't say he's coming like us when unlike us he has no family. You can't say he's coming like us when, like us, as Israel, we have a tribe. We are from one of the tribes of Israel. So in order for him to be like us, he has to be born into a family and a tribe within the commonwealth of Israel. So it is evident that our Lord sprang forth from Judah. How evident? It's very evident. Because he entered, he entered the world like a human, appearing as a human, but he did not have the origins of dust that we have. His body was unlike any person ever born of a man and a woman. It doesn't get any easier than this. This is easy stuff. To that about Yahweh. I told you, when I finish with this, you're going to kiss me. You can say, thank you, Rabbi, for clearing this up. Because I still had some questions. Thank you, but please kiss me in a most appropriate manner, please. Oh, no. <laughs> My wife is here, so let's not make it inappropriate. Oh. But you will kiss me, I think. Oh, no. For clear, <laughs> Brit sitting in I don't know. <laughs> Brit, I'll tell you what, brother, you can just shake my hand. How's that? <laughs> All right? Tadar <laughs> Abba Yahweh. Say on. Now, so, how could he be a high, uh, what, what is the purpose of the genealogy? To show you that he didn't, the word of Yahweh was not clothed in reptile flesh. The word of Yahweh was not clothed in alligator flesh. The word of Yahweh was clothed in a flesh like the rest of the family of David. Can't get any easier than that. Like the rest of the tribe of Judah. Can't get any easier than that. Right. Amen? Come on. So why the genealogy? To show that when the word entered the human family or entered the human race, that's the miracle of Yahweh. How can you enter the human race without being a human being? Once you understand that, you understand the miracle of the virgin birth. How could you enter the human family and not be of human origin? Once you understand that, you understand the virgin birth. Some of you are quiet on me. 
I'm going to get this all down in a PDF file right on the website in much more detail. So the genealogies are there to show you that Yeshua did not enter the family of Hare Krishna when, he, when the word became flesh. That Yeshua did not enter the family of Confucius when he became flesh. That he chose to enter in the family of David yet not being a human being. Does that make sense? He had to find a family to enter. If you adopt a child that's not yours, you can't just stick him out in left field and go, and go to lunch. You've got to raise him in your home. You've got to stick him in and plug him into the family. So you should have found the tribe and the family, the lineage of David, in which to stick himself in. That's easy. That's why you have the genealogy. Baruch Hashem, Yahweh. And now, one of this... This next point, and I'll save the best for last. Someone asked me, now here's the hard part, where most folks who get confused, thankfully we didn't have too many who were confused, thankfully. But there were some. That's okay. That means you're listening. <laughs> that means you're hungry. That means you want to know the truth. That's tough. I'm not offended. I only get offended when those questions come with an attitude. Oh, yeah. With a presupposition that you're wrong. Mm -hmm. That's when I get offended. But not from people that have been with me for six, seven years, who I love and who love me. I don't get offended. No, there are some Brother Moshi folks who love me too. Not everybody who calls me Brother Moshi does dislike me. Um, now, go to Mati Jiao. Let's talk about genealogy. Book of Matthew. Wasn't Yeshua conceived? Well, if Yeshua was conceived, the question goes, how can he not be a human being? I mean, he was conceived in Miriam's womb. Right, right. By the Ruach HaKodesh. Right. Yes. And the scripture is clear, Ben oh, okay. that he was not only the Word made flesh, but that he was literally conceived and gestation set in, nine months of gestation, in Mary's womb. So you cannot have a conception without him being at least partially human. Isn't that an excellent question? Isn't that a good question? I think that's a heck of a question. That's a very, very good question. Let me show you how easy it is to explain. Mati Yahu. I hope I got this right here. Mati Yahu. 120. But while Yosef, the stepfather, thought about these things, you see a heavenly malach of the master Yahweh appeared to the Gaura, the guardian, Yosef. There were two Josephs. One was Mary's Gaura, or guardian, because according to Torah, a 16-year-old girl could not be by herself. And before the 16-year-old girl, Miriam, was married to her husband, Joseph, she had a guardian, Yosef, son of Jacob, son of Matan, who was her Gaura, or her guardian. You wouldn't want a 16-year-old girl walking the streets of Miami alone. Absolutely not. Not down here. I believe it's best for her well-being that she has a guardian. No, that's right. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Come on. So legally in Torah, a girl that was 16 either was in her father's home or had an appointed guardian. If the father died, which Miriam's father, Mary's father, died, so they had the family appointed, like today they would appoint a court-ordered what? Thank you. Are you with me? Yes. Good. That's good. Come on. That helps. That definitely helps. Now, the Malach appears to the guardian, and I'm sorry, here in verse 19, it's the husband. Sorry, there's just two. There's the guardian and the husband. The Malach appears to Yosef, the husband. We see that in verse 19, as opposed to the guardian. But while they thought on these things, look, the heavenly Malach of the Master Yahweh appeared to Yosef in a dream saying, 